Good evening. I uh, will just wait for a minute or two. We have a few more people in the waiting room. So thank you for your patience. Um, just a minute or two. Um, I'll see some familiar names. That's really great. And some new names as well. So thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight. Uh, this is our third week and our sixth lecture in the Kuma International Architecture Month. As you all know, this, um, this year's theme is Living Borders, and it's um, conceptualized as a dialogue between Bosnia and Herzegovina and Palestine. Um, and so tonight, uh, of course, uh, with us is Claudia Zini, the director of Bokum International, and we have our speakers, uh, very special speakers, joining us, one actually from Palestine and the other one from Italy. Um, hopefully soon in Palestine as well. Uh, we have Abed and Alessandra from the Yala project. And so just before I give the word to the two of them, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about, um, about them. Um, we have their um, bios and, um, and then we can, uh, we can get started. So basically tonight, um, Alessandra and Abed will be giving us a lecture about the work that they do with the Yellow Project as an applied research hub on socio-spatial is issues. Um, so uh, starting with Alessandra, Alessandra Gola is an architect and researcher born in Bologna in 1983. She's currently concluding her PhD in architecture at Lund University with her thesis on the production of spatial domains in the contemporary Palestinian context. She attended her first MA in architecture from University of Ferrara in Italy and followed by the Masters of Human Settlements. And her work combines professional practice, academic teaching with her expertise focusing on grounded um, research on socio-spatial design, collaborating since 2006 with universities and international institutions across Europe and Palestine. Her research interests focus on the relationship between society, the built environment and legal uh, rights framework with a particular concern for the experience of displacement within the context of various forms of conflict. Um, and then uh, with her presenting together is Abed Kitane, who's an architect born in Nabulus in 1980. He's currently joined the staff, um, on the academic staff at the Department of Architectural Engineering in Birzeit University. He received his Bachelor in Architectural um, Engineering from the same university, and then he later obtained his Master's Degree in Architectural Regeneration and Development um, from the Oxford Brookes University. So in 2020, he obtained his PhD in Engineering Sciences with research on urban resilience and civilian survival in the Kassaba of Nabulus during the Second Intifada. His teaching experience includes architectural design, urban regeneration and urban design. His research interest, interests are in the field of city and war, urban resilience, architectural and urban development, and architectural history and theory. And so we're so happy to have both Alessandra and Abed with us tonight. Um, thank you so much for taking the time and, and for joining us. And also thank you um, for, th thank you for to the audience for being with us. Again, we will give the floor to Alessandra and Abed. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to type them in or we can have a discussion after the lecture. So um, first, I think Alessandra is, take over, is going to take over the floor. So Alessandra, over to you, thank you. So oh, thank you very much, Leila and, um, and Claudia. So, and um, we are very, very pleased of uh, this invitation from Kuma. And uh, we are very, very excited uh, of being virtually in Sarajevo tonight. Um, uh, so um, I think uh, we will start sharing our presentation. We, uh, we start apologizing for uh, if you will see any delay in, uh, in the slides, since the slides are projected by, uh, uh, from Palestine, uh, while I instead I'm speaking from Italy. Um, uh, actually, well, um, 
uh, indeed, we are in a, in a situation that works very well with uh, the topic of uh, this month. So, living borders, uh, indeed, uh, we are experiencing borders in a very strange way in this period, also because of, uh, of coronavirus and the way it changed, actually, the dimension of uh, being displaced, especially for international couples that uh, somehow live uh, under um, authoritarian regimes and, and uh, military occupation. So that's why our family now is, is not physically together tonight. So let's start um, uh, our talk. So I will just briefly introduce uh, actually who we are, um, as we are um, kind of a young reality. So this is the three of us, uh, the, um, the three founders. So uh, just very, very in brief, you can see our faces. So it is uh, um, Abdel Rahman, who is uh, to, today with us, um, Basil and myself. Uh, we are like we merge together three very different uh, life trajectories and very diff different expertises. So we are not all architects, uh, at least one of them, one of us is not. Uh, so we are actually an applied research center um, uh, that studies so social spatial issues uh, based in uh, the Kasbah of Nablus. So let's say that in one, one word, we may define ourselves as an urban center. Um, and uh, we work mingling in between interdisciplinary academic research and social enterprise together. So this is our, let's say, um, st structure, working structure, our methodology. And uh, our goals, uh, very in brief, is on one hand to understand the everydayness of communities and their living environment, so space and society, how they interact and influence each other. And uh, we conduct grounded research. Uh, so uh, this is why we are constantly uh, in the field and uh, we, our working uh, method is learning by doing. Um, so um, somehow I, I'm not seeing the next uh, the next slide okay so um, we have basically three principles w the first one fundamental is uh, that uh, we work as a collective our first aim is to create a network as um, we notice that uh, there are many realities not only in Palestine but uh, we look also at uh, realities across the Mediterranean basin that we see as our big home let's say uh, that all share the same aims um, and uh, the same ethics uh, the same uh, working ethics and the same aims to uh, improve um, to really improve the everyday life of people uh, in, in a simple way, but we are all very dispersed and isolated. So uh, this is a, a way to the, the, the aim of working as a, and to create a network, to have it as a goal and as a working method is for us a way to um, uh, to protest and um, uh, against uh, a certain way of working that is uh, made of very big realities that somehow push their agenda on the ground, while instead it is time for us to unite and uh, create a momentum. And uh, things can definitely change if we if we work as a network. So Yalla may work many times work works uh, without putting the brand Yalla. Uh, but we just uh, create a connection or, or we try to be an enzyme uh, to an action. So in the next slide, you will see the second, um, our second, let's say, um, uh, milestone that is that, uh, as already anticipated, we work hands-on every day. So as I mentioned uh, before, we have a part of the project uh, is based on social businesses, uh, which um, specifically are a social cafe and a guest house. So it is, uh, these are two very uh, publicly devoted uh, activities where um, uh, we encounter people every day, we listen to them, we are, uh, our work is to respond to um, 
um, their wishes, their tastes, uh, their preferences, and also to collect, um, uh, let's say, their feedback, which sometimes might be also negative on what we do and uh, all whatever, whatever surrounds them as tourists or visitors in, um, uh, in our guest house and uh, as um, uh, citizens uh, living in Nablus in our social cafe. Uh, so um, working hands-on every day and the, in the third, uh, let's say, connects with our third principle, that is to be financially independent and sustainable. So that's why also uh, one of the reasons why we have uh, two social businesses is uh, on one hand uh, uh, to um, uh, be free from any kind of clientelism, not to depend from uh, external money for surviving, not to being dependent on uh, grants or uh, um, big actors and, uh, and the money, uh, which always comes with some duties, um, so that we can listen to the field and decide whether a certain topic is relevant to the field and um, let's say it is the field suggesting uh, uh, hot topics uh, to face uh, and not the way around. Um, also please consider that uh, we are working in a politically unstable context, one of the most politically unstable contexts in history. Um, and uh, um, on the other hand, we are uh, one of the places in the world that mostly receives the interest from very big NGOs and their money, which made in 60 years at least um, a kind of, uh, well, it became a kind of a system or, or an expectation that in such an opaque environment, a big NGO will come as a deus ex machina and solve the problem of someone. While instead with our being every day in the field and work uh, in a very simple way with the people and uh, with our own hands, it is also to say we do not need to wait an external aid to come, someone from outside to come and save us. We can definitely make a lot with our own creativity and we can solve many problems, not all problems, but definitely at least we can create a momentum to change things together. I think we can go to the next part. Okay, I, I was unable to unmute myself. So. Uh, to come in, before we go to the next part to introduce our context, so we have two kind of entities in our search, which is the first one, it is Al Marsam, it's a research um, entity, so it's our think tank, it's our mastermind. And uh, the social enterprise consists of three uh, distinct uh, projects, which is Antique Cafe, it's an authentic cafe in the heart of the old town of Nablus. And also we have uh, Turquoise Guest House, which is also in a very authentic Nabulsi house, a very traditional house. And we have Mishwar, which is um, um, a project that organizes lots of social and uh, touristic activities. All of these activities together, uh, they, they bring us some income or they are the, the, the income generator of the Yalla project and they um, support its uh, activities. And also they are our social interface or social networking agencies. And they are also our cultural hand. So through these projects, through the cafe or the turquoise, through the spaces, through the activities, we become part of the cultural um, uh, part of the cultural mosaic in, in the old town of the city. And also through them, we can now activate some urban active actions like, like the, the last action that we had last week and we will talk about it later maybe. So the, the, the two entities are the research on one hand and the social enterprise in the other hand. So now I will introduce uh, quickly to, the, to our context, the old town of Nablus. So here is the map of Palestine, if someone is not familiar with. So here's Jordan and Palestine. In the red, it's the West Bank and Gaza Strip. And here is the, an aerial photograph, a Google map of um, Nablus city in general. And the area in the middle here is the old town of uh, city, the city of Nablus, or, or what we call the Kasbah. 
So Nablus is one of the largest Palestinian cities uh, on the land of Palestine, and it was uh, founded, uh, Neopolis, the Nablus, was founded in, in uh, 72. But um, of course, the city um, lived uh, three and three and three thousand fifty hundred five hundred years before um, BC, actually before before Christ. And uh, the population of Nablus is almost now two hundred thousand people. And um, here is we get closer look to so we can see now to um, um, social so a special context, which is the modern city or the city center on the right hand and then the old city on the left hand and here is uh, an image of um, what uh, the old town of nablus looks like so uh, the yalla project works in in this context and our main research agendas and research activities are happening about this context and also our cafe and uh, our um, guest house is are located in the middle of this um, a big mass of architecture. Um, uh, yeah, I have just to uh, say, tell Abdul Abdurrahman that, uh, sorry, uh, everyone, our slides are a little bit freezing. So I think he was speaking, and but you couldn't see the slides he was referring to. Ah, sorry. So what yeah. do you see now? Now we see the the drawn picture uh, on the top of the Dawar. Ah, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Let me know when, yeah, so when now you can it. see uh, yeah. the, an aerial view, of, a bird view of the Kasbah. So we ah. are very close to the green dome that you can see in the center of the picture. Okay, so this is the central mosque of the old town. And as I mentioned, this is uh, the context that we work in. And most of our agendas and activities, research or practical activities are uh, in this context. So, uh, the city of Nablus was occupied by the Israeli army in 1967 as a result of the Six, war, uh, six Days War. And um, between 1967 and uh, 1988, there were some clashes and some small revolts. But in, in 1988, there was the first on the major intifada and the Palestinian intifada all over Palestine. And Nablus was a major um, seedbed of the revolution. And um, it furthered the resistance. Um, a refuge from the Israeli army uh, normally found um, lots, uh, lots of difficulties in attacking the old town. In 1993, uh, there was the Oslo Agreement where the, between the Palestinians or the PLO and the Israeli government where Palestinians uh, were able to establish the Palestinian National Authority, which has uh, autonomous control on the Palestinian urban centers. And in 1995, Nablus became under the Palestinian security and administrative control. Um, the, the, um, the agreement was supposed to end in five years with the declaration of the state of Palestine in 1999. The failure of achieving the state of Palestine and the failure of successive uh, negotiation campaigns um, until the year 2000 led to the eruption of the second intifada in the year 2000. And I think most of you are aware about what happened in the year in the second intifada. But in Nablus in, in 2001, there was a very tight siege around the city. And in this map on the right, you can see all these squares represent the uh, Israeli blockades or the Israeli checkpoints and uh, or camps that were encircling the city of Nablus. So it was severely uh, closed. And in 2002, the Israeli army reoccupied the city and they invaded the city and occupied everything in the city. And there was a very heavy battle in the old town of Nablus for 21 days. Um, and the, the siege was lifted in, in 2007, actually. But from 2007 until 2021, 20, uh, we can say that we have lots of uh, day and night raids against the city by the Israeli army, and sometimes two to three times um, a week, and sometimes it takes uh, a whole day, and sometimes it is also accompanied with, uh, accompanied with uh, a curfew. So from 2000 until 2007, this was the hardest um, period for the city of Nablus. During this period, the city had experienced uh, different types of urban violence um, uh, 
almost all the time. So this range from the tight siege, as we have mentioned, for seven years, seven, seven years. And during these seven years, there were um, tight and complete closure for 12, 255 days, which is 13% per of the seven years. And uh, there was long curfews. And um, um, the, the long curfews, oh, the, the period of curfews was for 312 days, which is about 16%. So if we merge together 16 and 13%, we can say almost the third of the year Nablus was closed. And one of the uh, curfews actually lasted for almost five months. So it was uh, 151 days. And uh, during these 151 days, uh, the curfew was lifted only for 70 uh, hours. And of course, we have also the military raids that attack the Israeli attack, the Israeli army attack the city during the day or during the night for multiple reasons. And sometimes it's just to disturb the everyday life of the city. And um, you can um, you can observe some of the witness the, some of the um, confessions by the Israeli soldiers who mentioned that we were just doing this so we did, we don't let them feel the everydayness is coming back. So it's just for the sake of disturbing the everyday life of the city. And also during these seven years, there were eight large scale invasions with heavy battles happening in the city. During most of these invasions, actually, the city becomes an urban battlefield and um, it is completely closed. And the old town becomes the center of the battlefield. So normally most of the fighting happens in the old town. And the Israeli army during the invasions, during the attacks, attack the city, attacks the city from within the houses. So they break the walls. They, their strategy was walking through walls. So they occupy a house at the edge of the old town. Then they open a hole to the second house because of the dense and compacted uh, built tissue. So they could make lots of overground tunnels to pass from one house to another. And of course, while they pass through these buildings, they militarize many um, uh, houses and make them uh, their military bases. And of course, during these invasions, overground invasions, lots of um, battles or fightings happen inside the houses or inside the residential clusters. So as a result of all these uh, actions that happened in these seven years, uh, there were lots of uh, uh, displacement waves and uh, there were, uh, they were in different scales. So families have moved from the old town to the modern neighborhoods, but also from the, the city itself, from Nablus itself to other cities like Ramallah, for example. And also most of the businesses in the old town moved from the old town to the modern neighborhood. And also more than 50% of the businesses of Nablus moved to Ramallah and other cities. So as a result, the city became, um, lots of families became displaced. The old town become, became um, uh, empty of most uh, commercial and uh, productive activities. And in the old town, it's almost, uh, we had almost 60% of the buildings completely empty or derelict or has collapsed. So with these several uh, years of urban violence, so we had multi folds of boundaries. Uh, for the city. So uh, we had lots of abandoned, abandoned buildings, which were really um, uh, an important feature, or it is still until now, an important feature of the old town. These empty buildings, uh, many of them has, have collapsed, and they became um, um, dark zones or gray zones where many activities, um, bad social activities or bad behaviors, bad practices, or securely in security terms, it was very dangerous activities has done, has been done. Like for example, the Israeli army could attack these places by night. So people avoided any abandoned spaces. Of course, um, uh, these abandoned spaces became also inhabited by um, lots of um, um, uh, um, families who are not from, who are not really from the city, but they are occupying it for no, uh, no one knows why they occupy it for two or three days. So people started to leave these abandoned buildings. So when they, whenever there is an abandoned building, um, by one month, two months, two other buildings surrounding it will be empty. 
And also we have, uh, the, the society has shrinked and uh, fragmented. We started to have a fragmented society before it was the cluster, the residential clusters were inhabited normally by one family or maybe two families. But because many buildings became empty, so um, um, people moved uh, quickly because it started to feel insecure because of course the empty house, uh, sometimes it's occupied me without uh, the neighbor is not finding. Sometimes um, uh, the houses are occupied by Israeli army, by Israeli soldiers for a week without neighbors knowing. So people started to move and more buildings became empty. Some squatting families started to, to come. And of course, with these squatting families coming to live side by side with old families, it became a bit uh, hostile uh, environment. So people, it was not really friendly environment and clusters lost uh, the social tissue that used to, to, to exist in these clusters. And of course, because of the um, in, in consequent and of uh, continuous invasions and the frequent invasions and the curfews on the old town mainly, most, most businesses moved. And it also became a risk zone for any investment. So nobody wants to invest in the old town or to open any business in the old town. All this have created a negative image about, about the old town. And also then uh, most of cultural activities um, uh, moved out of the old town. So no, uh, there was no cultural activity in the old town for maybe from 2000, maybe until 2015. No cultural activity, activity can happen in the old town. And of course, all this together had created a territorial boundaries between the modern neighborhood or the modern city and the old city. So the old city became as a social special tissue that is stigmatized by being insecure, by being dirty, by being risky, and people avoid it. And whoever can leave the city to live outside the old town, to live outside the old town, they will leave immediately. So it became a hostile environment. It became um, a pushing environment and nobody wants to live in the old town but the poor families who found no other uh, refuge. So now we talk about the Yalla project and our agenda. Yeah, so all this in, uh, let's say, general uh, overview uh, is just to let you understand our the difficult context that we uh, we are that we are tackling, and uh, the the way we operate. So, uh, what is the difference between um, reconstructing or regenerating? So, as Abdul Rahman has. Uh, summarized, we are we face a very entrenched and disgregated um, context that, that is also especially uh, very much endangered. Uh, we have many abandoned houses and uh, um, a bad image uh, of of the city of the old town, while having also a lot of nostalgia. Meanwhile, from people living outside the old town, uh, so they uh, kind of. Um, um, idealize it, uh, but they cannot really, um, they do not uh, attempt to deal with it. Uh, so uh, the way to, uh, the, let's say, that, that we want to operate with is the opposite that you can see here. Let's say, uh, the, the, um, you can see here a short, uh, I will not go into the details, uh, the, the what it means to reconstruct. So uh, we are doing basically the opposite. So uh, we do not work, uh, uh, we refuse our top-down uh, logic. Um, we do not need to reconstruct things forcibly, but we need to find uh, new interest, a new vital energy for spaces. Um, uh, we um, have um, not so much architectural approach. So uh, as you can see here, uh, reconstruction doesn't have a holistic approach. You take an, an empty space, you, you rebuild it, but you don't really know exactly what to do with it because there is an, an entire cosmos 
uh, around each and every single living space. So you have to deal with economy, with society, with law, with uh, authorities. And authorities are not only the formal ones, but you also have many informal authorities that you have to deal with. First of all, for example, gatekeepers and the local, uh, the local dwellers. Um, and uh, we are much more interested in finding uh, uh, flexible solutions that look towards to the future and that are uh, easy to implement and uh, to experiment with people rather than having mega projects um, that are not so much, let's say, people sensitive. Um, let's go to the next slide, perhaps. when we see it. Ah, this displacement and, uh, and uh, projections and, uh, um, and presentations across to, yeah. So here we are, you can see where, where is our place in the heart of the Kasba. And you can see basically the two main flows that we intersect. So when we started working, our road was very marginal, despite where you see uh, the, the orange line, that's um, the, the central part of it. The one inside the Kasba is uh, the, um, the ancient market, so it's very lively. Um, and uh, nevertheless, our part, the, the, the road where, where we are, um, for uh, let's say at least 15 years, didn't experience um, any real activity. There was only one shop uh, still resisting there and a bakery. But although we are uh, on the route from the local university to the central transportation hub, that is the one used by students, um, students used to uh, circumnavigate the Kasba rather than cut through it, enjoy a beautiful walk in the historical uh, center and then go to their university. In the meantime, uh, the few tourists that um, were visiting the city until, well, uh, tourism started again a little bit in a more consistent way around 2012, um, were not uh, uh, stretching towards our road. They were just staying in uh, um, the two uh, sections of the market, the one in uh, uh, in orange in the center of the city until it crosses the blue line and the parallel toward, uh, toward north. So the place that we have chosen, so in the same street we have facing each other the, uh, the coffee shop and the guest house as our foot um, on, uh, in the city, let's say, uh, was also uh, uh, willing to tackle exactly that specific place that was very marginal, although being, being very central. So let's go next. Okay. So um, Alessandra has described how um, other um, regeneration or con reconstruction projects have worked actually, and most of the work that has been done by the municipality and other agencies was really um, the, the thing that we described before. But we can't see the, the slide yet. Yeah, yeah so um, in our uh, approach, Still. we just wanted to be an acupunctural uh, urban intervention. So we concentrate on one place, we increase the flow in this place. Then if we increase the flow, we um, inspire people to, to, to open businesses. So our methodology, do you see the, the, yeah. the increase of the flow? The next slide? No, not yet. Okay, <laughs> hopefully you can see. <laughs> That's so very our, our idea is that uh, to attract more people. So we saw that um, students pass by, but uh, quickly and some um, tourists Pass by, but quickly. So we wanted to to increase the, their flow and also to target the other people. We believe that um, more people coming to the place means larger flow. Larger flow means um, uh, more attention to the uh, ca capacity of the old town. Uh, more attention means more businesses. So when we attract attention to the old town, the spaces of the old town, 
uh, new businesses might uh, notice this and then they will open. New businesses means new services and the new types of um, people coming. And then it means also more users. More users give better economic conditions to the businesses that already exist or the new businesses. And also enhancing enhances the feeling of security for the people living and also for the people who wish to come back to live in the city. So the flow was not only to, to, to encourage businesses or to, to elevate the economic conditions of the people, but also to give the sense of security for the people who wish to come back to live in the old town. We believe that uh, until now we, we could motiv motivate lots of businesses and we definitely attracted much, much more people than what we expected. And we believe that at the end, if we continue, we will attract more resident to come, residents to come back and dwell and live in the city. Maybe the old residents who moved from the city can come back, but also other residents can come back. So to attract more people, we have the students and the tourists, as we have mentioned, but we wanted to increase their flow but by attracting more students and more, more tourists. And we also concentrated more on the young females as a target group, because uh, normally females were unable or were always scared to get inside the old town because of the bad image about the old town. So we targeted young females to come in. And in our culture, when females are around, when females move around and walk in the street, it, is, it means that it is more secure and more people are willing to come. And of course, to attract these people, we wanted to create the quality spaces or what we call Instagrammable corners or um, cozy feelings where these young people, young females, students and tourists feel uh, comfortable and they would love to, to stay and take photos and post them. So we didn't use any uh, marketing uh, strategy. Our marketing tactic was uh, these Instagrammable corners where people come and uh, post on their Instagrams and Facebook. And also we wanted to control um, uh, the type of people and the type of businesses that they come by keeping the prices low. So we targeted the, uh, the, the, the middle class or maybe lower middle class in the city. So our services and our prices were not targeting um, uh, the higher class. So because we wanted to target the majority of people in the old town. And of course, we um, guaranteed the feeling of security in our spaces and almost also in, in our neighborhood by, by recruiting some uh, security uh, members to, to take care of all actions that happen. And now here we show some of the uh, photos, some photos of our spaces. I hope you can see them. Do you Not see? Not really. Not yet. Okay. While, Just okay. Please. So... Yeah. Um, as you, as you see, um, we are trying to uh, minimize our intervention, so to conserve whatever we can and give it a, another life, a new life. So um, um, a mobile house uh, that was derelict for years became um, um, a guest house, uh, which you can see in two of the, in, in three of the pictures actually. Uh, the lower one um, uh, uh, that you can see is uh, was actually bomb, a bombed room, so it was without a roof. Um, the way we worked, I think it is important for us to stress it, is not to mimicry. Uh, anything ancient to give a fake sense of uh, of heritage we conserved and uh, and consolidated what we had and we tried to give a contemporary twist with something minimal we are working on very very small budgets as as i said we are self funded and we really started with a few pennies in our pockets um, and the way we work is being constantly in touch with the public so we get their feedback we we get their comments we hear them uh, when they visit us saying i liked this um let's have a picture there and nevertheless we really war walk on 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 the edge uh of uh, of a blade let's say so um 
to work with Instagrammable ideas, it's, it may sound a little bit dangerous because it's kind of like um, faking something or uh, beautifying rather than finding another life. And instead, we are really trying to uh, just to capture the mood of people of what they are lacking so basically we found three things before starting we really dedicated a lot of time understanding this on one hand uh, as abed was mentioning uh, that we were trying to um, invite uh, more uh, women and girls to visit the old town we had plenty of materials and uh, um, personal experiences of uh, um, uh, friends, girls, um, um, uh, people in the family, uh, colleagues and, and, and whatnot, um, all from the female side, on one hand saying, oh, how much would I like to visit um, such a uh, beautiful heritage that they could see in Syrian uh, movies. Uh, there are some fashionable uh, Syrian movies uh, that um, are shooted in uh, fake historical um, sites uh, and meanwhile saying yeah but we would never visit our own old town because it's too dangerous we will, would never go there on the other hand for example um, we would uh, we captured the mood of many of the students and also young families that were trying to find a nice place where to have a cup of coffee but uh, without being in an environment and in a kind of uh, business that is more a neoliberal kind of, of coffee shop. So very expensive, you would pay uh, for your coffee maybe three, four times the, the price that you would pay uh, from a street vendor, uh, but it still would be very shiny and a little bit yeah, fashionable, but without a, um, a real route to the place and a uh, third thing for example for visitors both from uh, um, foreign tourists but also from uh, that part of Palestinians that still live in within let's say the Israeli territories that uh, were uh, often complaining about not finding a place where to stay during their holidays and their travels that could in one hand give them a, a real sense of how it is or how it was the life uh, the traditional life in palestine give it a taste while finding uh, that comfort that um, uh, uh, familiarity the the feeling of being at home uh, that uh, they needed to rest properly and to relax finally so for example something very simple for us but it was so effective was to set up beds so beddings in a western way so and to keep them white so that our customers could find a kind of bed that is similar to the one that they had at home and that it was uh, visibly clean and new. So I, I will cut it short so Abdurrahman continue, otherwise we will never finish, sorry. <laughs> and it's already quite late. Okay, so we, we continue. So our acupuncturist approach was also, uh, it, it was uh, supposed to be tactical. So we don't, um, we can't work strategically in the old town, not only because of uh, the old town, but also because of, because of the um, political conditions in Palestine, it might twist at any time. And then um, um, fighting might uh, start at again at any time in the old town. So we have to be tactical and we have to be careful about any step. So to be tactical, we should be uh, flexible. We, we had to be uh, reversible or able to reroute and we had to be resilient economically, but also socially and also um, 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 uh, culturally. So we, 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 we don't need to put an agenda that we think that it must work, but we work um, like um, we have an, a tactic or we have an, a short plan and then we go on. But uh, of course we have a clear long run objective, but we have short run tactical actions. So the short run tactical actions normally fit with, with uh, the long run uh, um, or general objectives that we have. 
Um, and now we were also uh, one of our um, 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 tactics to be in, in the old town or in our yeah. occupational approach is to be socially involved. Would you like a little? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, this is, I will not talk very long at <laughs> this time. So here you can see our toolkit. Uh, this is our toolbox for working on um, any activity that uh, that we decide to engage with uh, was it uh, from like from ourselves so labeled the yalla project or just as uh, a cooperation with someone else and uh, we may not even appear so uh, you read it yourself it is a do it yourself it is a do it collectively so we we support but um, we do not work as a solo and uh, do it with neighbors so for us it's uh, it is absolutely fundamental to uh, build trust with our neighbors we are part of the local community and we really need to make the difference with um, those international NGOs that come sometimes have a field worker work there in the field perhaps one year sometimes two years and then they disappear and nobody comes back uh, and nobody will ever check if people are happy or not um, so we we work hand in hand with our neighbors we are part of the local tissue and we do it with the local businesses as well so um, we try to create uh, and we are working on some new activities in uh, in the near future to really create also a network of uh, friend businesses that would like to try not to work in a new liberal way that is only oriented towards um, just getting profit and getting it quickly but also to create a positive environment all our activity in the end the bottom line is to produce a positive loop and uh, let's go to the next slide so i can shut my mouth <laughs> so uh, in in two in two um sentences we don't work we we don't work with the local community we are part of the local community if you come i hope you come and visit us, you ask who is uh, Dr. Kitane, he's, he's a kind of like a, a character, he became a character and the only way to be there is somehow to be recognized as one of the characters of, of the old town. Um, uh, and uh, so we really became, we, we have daily relations with, with people that come and visit us and uh, the way the, our working method is made so that issues emerge from the field and not it is not that we push uh, our issues agendas even if it's the, the i hate this word but it is very much used in uh, in the funding uh, in writing fund for funds sexy topics even if we may find money uh, writing on a sexy topic for finding a grant if the 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 field is not um, is not showing it we will not write it so even as an example we talked about um, gender issues it is just because they emerged since we started working not because we know that there is an interest in international ngos in working on gender if if it doesn't come from the field we don't care about that so i think that we can see the, the next slide Abed. okay so yeah uh, i think um um one of the um major points that really distinguish our project is uh, we we are um, financially incremental and from the very beginning, we said that your coffee in antique will make the difference. And uh, literally, it made the difference in our neighborhood. So we started our business by, uh, or our project by uh, Antique Cafe. So we landed on the old town by opening the cafe, the cafe Antique, with a very um, minimal uh, startup investment. And we started uh, to, to divide the income that we, uh, 
earn from the, the cafe to uh, to modify or to improve the cafe, but also to keep it for other um, rehabilitation project. And this scheme shows that at the beginning, we started the investment by antique, and then we offered coffee for the people. We with uh, not only coffee, of course, but uh, the money we, we earned from uh, the cafe was uh, going to the yellow budget, to the general budget, and or to the renovation of the uh, second building, which became the turquoise um, number one, because we have two buildings that we are renovated into turquoise guest house. And then we started operating the turquoise one, and the money that comes from the turquoise, part of it was going to the yellow budget, and the, um, part of that money was going to pay the cheeks or the delayed payments for turquoise. And later we started the third, the renovation of the third building, and then we were um, uh, paying for the renovation of the third building from the cafe and from turquoise one. And now we have finished uh, the three buildings and all the payments for the cafe and for turquoise one are already done. So we finished all the payments for the first two projects, uh, all from the uh, income from the cafe and from the uh, first uh, um, hostel or the first building of the hostel. And now we still have one year to come uh, to pay the rest of the money, but our business is now paying for all of these um, uh, investments actually. So this was our uh, financial methodology, financial uh, strategy or financial tactic, whatever. And we think this is a, a tactic that is missing in all regeneration projects in, in Palestine. And actually it worked and literally our coffee or the coffee in, in antique made the difference in, in our neighborhood. So um, in our neighborhood, actually, in, we we didn't uh, make a very uh, solid uh, um, uh, impact study because um, uh, we are still waiting one year to come to finish our impact study. But at least within the last two years, and despite the COVID and despite the closure for many, uh, for many months in the last uh, year and even this year, we, we noticed that or we witnessed the opening of eight businesses in our neighborhood. So in uh, 2020 and 2019, uh, we have a boutique and a perfume shop and a bakery and a restaurant. But lately in the last few months, we have a very big Turkish bath and a very fashionable restaurant and two other cafes that were really inspired by our designs and by our um, uh, strategy and by our service. So in, in, in two years and and these two years where COVID was really occupying all of these activities, all, the, all of the spaces. But despite that, at least we have eight businesses opened in the same neighborhood and all are in our um, um, walking distance neighbors. Yeah. Well, and, in, uh, uh, you can see also from, from the image that uh, um, the, the shops that are opening are going towards the, the market now. So they are activating from our point they are reconnecting with the with the um, with the tissue of uh, the heart of the city also what it doesn't show in the in um, in the map is that meanwhile several shops that are in our neighborhood uh, that were already existing and working have renovated and several of them uh, have come to our place to ask where did we buy certain materials, how much it costed to us. Um, and uh, they started reshaping a little bit the interiors in a, in a way that is quite similar to ours, even like choosing the same color. We have a flagship um, uh, color that is the turquoise uh, that initially was seen as something very obsolete because it's taken from uh, the houses of uh, grandfathers. Um, it's a very old fashioned uh, color that uh, started coming back in the interiors of, of uh, several shops. Sorry, Abed. So since uh, 2019, I will go quickly. We have uh, in, we have organized many many activities in cafe in the cafe in antique cafe and in turquoise hostel. 
or guest house. We have organized uh, more than 25 art and cultural events, and one of them was tonight, actually. It was a Quranic um, Sufi night, um, and it was alive um, one hour ago. And we had uh, activated almost more than 18 social activity. Some of them are also about renovating or helping other in renovating their building. And we have organized more than 22 um, uh, tours in the old town. And we had um, worked on seven or maybe more than seven academic collaborations in the last two years. And uh, to, to, to test our, um, to, to, to test our um, uh, um, impact on the people and on the, how they perceive us, we have also used the social media to say, to, to, to question them. So this is a questionnaire. What do you think that antique and turquoise encourage you to visit the old town? And we found that 94 percent of the, of the of our guests or of our followers answered that yes we motivated them to visit the old town and here we also made another one what makes you visit us again so we see that space quality is 70 percent it's the major point here and of course the staff and the social environment the service the service is because um, it's not we share the same service with almost all cafes in the old town but um, the space quality is really unique and it, it's attracting uh, more people than expected. And here are some images of the place while, while we were working in it. So this is one of our rooms in the cafe. And by the way, the cafe is, um, is an 800 years structure. So it is mainly, oh can date back to the Mamluki era. And here is uh, the photo of the main hall of the cafe with some activities. And here, while we were working in the renovation, we are not seeing it. So perhaps Sorry. go back. To, yeah, so you can see how how we started, and how it became. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Same here. It is in the same, or almost the same place where you have seen. Uh, you seen it before. The um, um, the picture of that uh, small apartment that was white and turquoise. So that is. Uh, one year and a half ago, how it was when we started. So in the, at the, at the back of uh, Abed, uh, on the left side, you can see a door and you can see that we were building uh, the roof there. But at that, at that point, we were just um, covering the rooms that were, uh, and you can see that we have just um, uh, metal sheets covering uh, this part of the room because it was uh, uh, bombed during the Intifada. Yeah, and this is, uh, if you see the rooftop, how we we received it, it was almost uh, without a rooftop, actually. Yeah. And uh, this is some of the activities that we have organized on the rooftop. And this is, um, hopefully you can see it. Yeah, this One is the, 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 the slide that you see now that we can see from here, Abed, is still the rooftop of uh, the, the guest house how it was when we entered and um, how it became. So we had some festivals, we have uh, cultural nights, and this is one of the rooms of, um, uh, of the guest house, how it was again when we started and how it is now if you come and visit us. And now we have the new images. And, and I would like to add that, for example, you see beds, we built, we built beds. Um, uh, and uh, many of the furnitures that you can see otherwise are uh, second hand that we have uh, uh, bought for, for little money and refurbished personally. Uh, the same is for uh, what you see here that is the, the hall of our uh, guest house that also became a, a place where we have uh, several events and um, uh, and here you can see by chance, it was not a female only day, but you can see that most of our customers are now actually women. Yeah, and uh, now it's some, some of our activities. And uh, I think we are done. Yeah, we don't see the, the, the last slide, I think, Abed. Yeah, be patient, you will see it. <laughs> yeah yeah it's a matter of faith <laughs> yeah okay we seen we have seen it very very briefly now we see it thank you
Okay, so I think it's, we are done by this. Thank time. you very much. I'm sorry for taking a little bit longer. No, thank you. Uh, thank you, Abed and Alessandra, uh, for your really inspiring presentation. Um, your work is so, I mean, brings a sense of optimism and a sense of, uh, let's say, you know, as academics, we often talk about the strategies of urban regeneration and how they ought to be. And um, as I think very few of us get the opportunity to make such a big difference in our neighborhoods that are so visible in such a short time. Um, so before I give the floor to, to the audience, I'm sure people have questions. I want, if, if it's okay, I wanted to ask you um, a question. First of all, I wanted to make parallels when you were showing us that map of the city under siege, um, especially like um, it's a linear city organized in the old town. It's, it's organized along the longitudinal axis. And it's very similar to Sarajevo in terms of the morphology. And then looking at the siege line, it kind of brings back certain, let's say, parallels and memories. Uh, just the difference is in Sarajevo, uh, the, siege, the siege was always around the city. And so, of course, the buildings were part of the strategic military action. Um, and then hurting the buildings or destroying the buildings was just as much part of the killing as was the hurting of the civilians. But we never had the military actions like taking place within the city itself, where the military kind of infiltrates the buildings and walks through them. So, I mean, obviously I've read about this uh, in, in terms of Palestine, and this is, this is kind of a new element that's, that's really um, uh, scary in a sense that invades the space physically. And I'm just wondering, like, um, your projects are a bit of a reflection of what um, Nadia was showing us the first week, these very carefully inserted projects, sometimes small scale that kind of grow to a larger scale. And she also brought the same passion. And I know that you work with her as well. And I, I, I assume that she's, there, she's my teacher anyway. <laughs> right? So I, I assume there, there, there is an influence there. Yeah. I can see that passion and also that attention to detail and then working with community, you know, all those things she talked about, you also bring in your work. Uh, but maybe you have taken it to the next level by introducing like an economical model that that kind of makes itself sustainable as well. So basically, I'm going on and on about this, but um, I, I was wondering um, what happens. Is there a possibility that the military might come back to the old town? <laughs> um, and and. Yeah. And, and what happens then? Is it less likely now that you have, yeah, now you have created this wave of, of, you know, regeneration and there maybe isn't so much of an excuse, like it's abandoned and dangerous. Do you think that would, might help minimize the, the, the military, the possible military at future attack? Or are, are, how do you deal with that? Because, you, you know, all, all these projects are great and I'm so optimistic and I want to go to Nablus right now. But then in the back of my mind is like, oh my God, what happens if, if something occurs? How do, you, how, do you deal, how do you deal with that? Maybe, maybe I, I'm bringing kind of a negative note to the whole thing, but uh, I'm just wondering, how do, you, how do you, is there a way of coping with it? Do you think it might not happen because um, everything is now regenerated and, and new and there's no reason, let's say security reasons to, to, come, to come into Nablus? Yeah, I think um, I think of course we 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 can expect um, things to 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 go back to battlefield again. Actually, it is um, it's in the field actually, or it's in the in the air all the time. But of course, um, at the moment we live in a kind of uh, let's say peaceful environment. We can be a bit of so, we, we normally build, uh, assuming that we have longer period of um, stability, but um, uh, normally we are kind of uh, trained to, to have failures because of the insecurity that we have. But of course, in our project, uh, we had, um, that's why we wanted also to be independent and we wanted to be a financially uh, kind of uh, resilient. And uh, we have, um, we had uh, the payments for the, the renovation and for the establishing of the project are uh, distributed on long run. 
actually. So even with our uh, small budget that comes from our uh, jobs, because we most all of us, the three of us have jobs actually, at, or at least now two of us have jobs, we can pay the payments out of our jobs if the, the um, if the uh, uh, cafe and the turquoise hostel were shut down. And actually the, the hostel is closed uh, since uh, maybe one and a half years now. So was closed. Uh, yeah, was we, closed. We just opened, yeah, we just opened yeah. maybe last two months actually. And uh, we were completely dependent on the cafe actually because uh, we opened the cafe earlier. So um, financially it is um, possible to, to maintain the project and uh, even if there is a new wave, but of course the destruction, no one controls what happens. And actually this, um, uh, the, the large uh, hole that you have seen that we showed in our project as well, this is the hole um, uh, resulted from a, a bombing, 12 years. And because the bombing, the, the wall that divides the two rooms uh, collapsed and people made it one hole actually. So it is, um, um, we can't expect where the bombing happens, but, or where the fighting happens. It, actually, our hostel was a, a battlefield. So there was fighting inside the hostel itself, uh, through the rooftop and uh, through the courtyard that it has. And we can't actually guarantee that things will not happen again, but hopefully it will not. So, but if it happens, it's um, actually, it's a matter of fact in Palestine, I think. Well, um, and also, as I, as we mentioned, uh, we are tactical. So we have a general long-term goal, but we know that in the day-by-day -day activities, something may happen, something may disrupt, and we are, we are always ready to shift a little bit our plans or to change something. As an example, during the coronavirus, we were shut down for one year and a half, as Abed said. Uh, but we had a very big internal courtyard and a, a big rooftop that was open air. So it was safe to um, provide a place for uh, customers for the coffee shop that also were very much suffering from the lockdown. Also consider that many houses, especially in our neighborhood, but also in many families are a little bit crowded. The average uh, family in our region is um, counts around six people, so four kids, uh, four uh, offspring. So it was we decided, okay, now we will shut down the, the hostel, uh, the, the, the guest house. There is nothing to do with it. We kept renovating a part that was much more private, so we could create some safe corridors for um, uh, families that wanted to stay in a, a mini apartment to visit us, and uh, they would be completely alone. Meanwhile, the open air spaces that we had, we used it for, for welcoming customers. So it's just trying to think a little bit out of the box and do what we have. Mm -hmm. Really amazing project. We have a question from Thank Amira. She, she presented last week. Um, she, she says, thanks, Abed and Alessandra. I was on and off during your presentation, so you may have already answered my question. I was just wondering if you see your project as a model to be re replicated in other Palestinian slash Middle East cities. Um, if so, what would you recommend slash change as a starting point? That's a good question. Thank you. Yeah, it's a very big question. Thank you, Anwar. Yeah. Thank uh, you, Anwar. It's, it's such a pity that we cannot be together <laughs> physically in the same place. She's a very, very uh, admired colleague of us. May, perhaps may I go on that? Um, the Yala project was not born to be just for Nablus, uh, but uh, it was our uh, attempt to create a paradigm, to experiment a paradigm, um, an, an, a small scale one, um, that with some adjustment, of course, uh, can be reproduced um, in other conditions. Initially, we, we started thinking about the Mediterranean basin because there is a coiner, there is a common ground in the communities that, uh, uh, and the cultures uh, across the Mediterranean basins uh, with differences. But mainly, um, 
we wanted to see whether it, it is possible to escape uh, that mechanism that links uh, forcibly research to, um, let's say, academic funding or big funds uh, or big entities, and that keeps disconnected the academic knowledge on one hand and academic thinking on one hand and everyday knowledge and everyday thinking on the other. And instead it's time for them, I think globally in, there are several um, initiatives that are trying also or that are tackling this problem. The everyday knowledge should inform the academic knowledge and the way around the academic knowledge should go and support uh, the everyday life of people and this is our way of trying i think yes we we can uh we can and i think we will try uh, in the future but collectively again great and maybe she also asked if, um, if we have recommendations and actually we do have recommendations but it's a big issue but firstly we we our recommendation is to change the mentality about how to receive how to perceive our um, uh, capacity as palestinians to build our own uh, places without um, without international funds so if we we, we after long years of um, uh, dependency on uh, international agencies and international funds people started to think that there is no there is no way to to rebuild or to renovate or to regenerate any place without international funds so we should first see, change our mentality and also we we have lots of recommendations about the law about the uh, system of um, uh, for example until now we are not registered as officially as a hostel because of the bureaucracy of the palestinian uh, uh, legal uh, system we cannot really um, uh, open, uh, we cannot open um, uh, a bank account for our business because we are not really registered. So it is a, a, whole, a whole issue of how to, to, to support businesses because we, we give a paradigm for business that is really incremental while at the same time it's uh, mentored by a research. So this paradigm cannot only work with good intentions or with research. So we need legal modifications to support our existence, our, our survivability in, in, uh, in the city. So we have lots of recommendations. And I think at the end of the fifth year of our project, we will publish our experiment as Yalla project in the old town. And we will have lots of recommendations and lots of issues um, tackled maybe for the first time in such a condition. Thank you, Abed. And if you were to do it again, um, what things might you might you change, or are there certain things that you might do differently? Nice question. Um, I don't know. In so far, at least for me, uh, well, I, I wouldn't change. Uh, perhaps I, I would keep better my archive. Yes, I would maintain my archive a little bit better because now we have to put in order our, our, our data and we need more time. But we really, by thinking collectively and thinking and taking it easy. So before starting Yalla, we took five years thinking about it, smelling the air and everything, reading a lot and doing a lot. Uh, it, I, I think we are pretty happy. Uh, it's not perfect, indeed it's not perfect, but in, in its imperfection, because imperfection is something that must always be put in, in the bill. We must always consider that things may, may not work or may work uh, differently from what we expected. But I think perhaps have Abbott thinks it differently, I don't know. But no, I think, I we, think because we work as one big stupid brain. <laughs> yeah. I think if I want to change something, I just want to be more courageous actually, because now I think I'm very confident about our methodology. And I just want it, if I do it again, I will be more adventurous. I, I will have to uh, excuse, to apologize, because unfortunately, um, we went a little bit over time and I have uh, a, a very lovely 
uh, issue that is that uh, our child that is just seven months old is in need to <laughs> to yeah, have his dinner <laughs> so i think i will leave uh, abdurrahman uh, to continue the session i am i really apologize because i would very much like to stay all night long with you although i think that also the other guests uh, at a certain point would fall asleep <laughs> but uh, i will have now to switch on my uh, on my family tasks <laughs> thank you so much for being with us so maybe maybe we can wrap it up if i don't see very many more questions and like you said we did run maybe a little bit over time so um, I'm just going to say Anwar says, amazing. Thanks, friends. Keep up the great work. Love from Canada. And then a bunch of people want to now come to Nabilis. So Michael says, thank you for the inspiring presentation. You're doing beautiful work. I would like to visit Nabilis. Nicola says, thank you for a very inspiring presentation about your work. Definitely would like to visit this location. Um, so uh, Kuma, Claudia from Kuma and myself are also joining the, the sentiment. And so hopefully you will be seeing lots more people coming to, to, to the guest house uh, at Nambulus. Really, it, it would be uh, amazing to, to come and visit and support the project. And so we would very much like to have much more uh, exchange between Palestine and Bosnia, actually. Agreed. So, so having said that, I will wrap things up. Um, and maybe give a word to Claudia. Thank you so much, Alessandra and Abed. You, you have been very inspiring. And uh, I hope also that your students um, can participate in some of these actions that we didn't get a chance to talk about, the collaboration maybe with Derset mm -hmm. University or some other Palestinian universities. Um, but I hope that they get a chance to, to kind of collaborate in the projects because I think this is also an amazing opportunity, a learning opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Claudia, Indeed, uh, yeah. I would like to thank uh, Abed and Alessandra for a beautiful presentation from being with us uh, tonight. Uh, it's really fascinating what you're doing there. And uh, I loved everything what you were explaining to us tonight, but especially when you said that you're not just uh, working with the local community, but you are part of the local community. It really feels like you're on a mission there and it's beautiful. And I relate so much with Alessandra, I guess, also because we are both from Italy and we chose to work abroad, so to embark on a, on a mission somewhere else. And it, it's really, it's encouraging, it's fascinating, it's really inspiring what you're doing. It's really great. So I really hope that there will be an occasion for me and for other people at Kuma, some other friends from Sarajevo, maybe to join you and, and, and visit you in Nablus. So congratulations again. And Thank keep you. up with the work. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much, really. And you are most welcome at any time. So you have a place, you have a project, you have a horizon in Palestine. Indeed. <laughs> you as well in Sarajevo, just so yes. you know. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Indeed, indeed. Thank you very, very much uh, for everything. It was a great, great occasion. Same here. Thank you. So we continue next week. Uh, yes, next week, today is Thursday. Uh, we have our last guests, uh, Aina and Susie, next week. Uh, so I hope that you can join us then. So hopefully. Thank you. Hopefully from the same place. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Okay. Take care now. Thanks, Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thank you, yes, everyone, Bye. for joining Bye. again tonight. Good night. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us again. See you next week, hopefully. Bye-bye. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.